The Pacific Ocean, the Western Pacific region in particular, harbors the world's biggest tuna stocks. But the region's island states and territories harvest little of this resource themselves. Instead, they sign fishery access agreements with other countries. They license foreign vessels to fish in their waters because they lack the financial resources and infrastructure to establish their own fisheries and supply international markets. Yet good markets do exist for whole tuna, whether fresh or frozen. Japan, for example, imports fresh and frozen sashimi quality tuna. Sashimi quality frozen fish production requires a high level of technical supervision by staff trained to handle fish at very low temperatures, down to minus 55 degrees centigrade. But the fresh fish market, mainly involving the auction sale of whole fish at their destination, requires standards of quality and freshness that can only be achieved with regular airline connections, which most Pacific Island countries cannot yet offer. Markets also exist for canned tuna and whole frozen fish, but the returns are low. Because of these difficulties in accessing export markets, some Pacific Island countries, like French Polynesia, have decided to pursue another option, tuna loins, cut, frozen and packed onboard tuna vessels and sold on international markets such as the United States and Europe. The boats used are 25 meter long liners, sometimes called factory ships or freezer vessels. They have an extensive fishing range and can operate for 50 to 60 days in distant waters from the subtropical zone to the so-called Roaring Forties. They have conventional long liner equipment plus a blast freezer, a filleting room and large fish holds. They set 1,800 to 2,500 hooks daily, snapped onto a main line 80 to 100 kilometers in length. These boats comply with European and HACCP hygiene standards, enabling them to export to the European and US markets. Albacore, a white-fleshed tuna species, is their primary target, but catches are also sometimes loined to be sold on the local market. The line is paid out in the early morning, then the crew takes a meal and some rest. Line hauling begins in the late afternoon and this activity keeps the whole crew busy for several hours. The skipper stays at the wheel to manoeuvre the boat while the line is hauled in. The crew pull the catch aboard, sort the species and prepare the fish on deck before processing. They are bled, headed and gutted as quickly as possible. The fish are then transferred to the filleting room, where one or two specialists take over. They work in this area only, so as to comply with hygiene standards. A strict order is then followed in processing the fish. Filleting, skinning, quarter loining, rinsing, drying, wrapping in film, labelling and freezing. When two filleters work together, one of them handles the cutting operations, while the other is responsible for wrapping and freezing. Each individual loin is labelled during processing to make the fish traceable. The species, day caught and processing method are all recorded, which makes it easier to identify and isolate products in the event of a hygiene problem. As the catch is processed, the tuna loins are carefully laid out, straight and not touching each other, on trays or shelves which are then transferred to the blast freezer. The loins then pass through a freezing process at minus 35 degrees centigrade, which lasts at least six hours. When the freezing process is complete, the loins are taken out of the blast freezer and stored in the main hold. One person is in charge of quality during the process. This task is usually performed by the skipper or the chief filleter. The quality control specialist oversees loining operations, ensures the equipment is cleaned and disinfected and checks the temperature in the storage hold every four hours. During the loining process, samples are taken to be used for later quality inspection. Depending on what equipment is available on board, the last catches taken during a trip can be stored in ice or refrigerated seawater to be sold on the local market. Back in port, 
The samples from each trip are sent to a laboratory. Depending on the type of testing required, the results may only come in three or four days later. If the results are favorable, the loins are packed in boxes, which are loaded into a refrigerated container complying with approved hygiene standards. All that then remains to be done is to ship them by sea to the European or US markets. As they suit the economic conditions of the Pacific Islands, these boats offer many benefits. One, they do not need shore-based processing facilities since the processing and packaging work can be carried out on board. Two, the initial investment outlay is low compared to that of a fishery with onshore processing. Three, they generate local employment prospects because they do not require highly qualified staff. Four, they guarantee product freshness and quality because the catch can be processed and frozen on board without delay. Five, the traceability of fish is simplified. Six, fishing trips are longer so vessels spend more time fishing and less time in transit. Operating costs are reduced and margins are higher. Seven, they operate to European and HACCP hygiene standards, making it possible to export to the US and European markets. By making it easier to enter new markets, this onboard tuna loining and freezing process should help Pacific Island countries and territories to develop local fishing fleets and benefit more from their own fishery resources. Mm -hmm.